Hallelujah and blessings in Jesus, friends. Welcome back to High Kadosh Ministries, where holiness is a way of life, and Jesus is truly King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And together with grateful hearts, God's people say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, friends, today is August the 1st in the year of our Lord, 2017, and this is one a day for the soul. Can you believe it's August the 1st already? Summer's over, and before we know it, winter will be here. Well, friends, I'm delighted that you're here this morning, and we are going to take our text out of 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Now, I'm going to read a portion of Scripture because this is far too rich to pass up, but I want to focus on one specific point. Let's begin in verse 14. Now, we exhort you, brethren, warn them that are unruly. Now, pay attention to the advice that we receive here. Warn those that are unruly. Comfort the feeble-minded. Support the weak. Be patient toward all men. That includes in the supermarket. That includes when we're driving down the road. Be patient toward all men. See that none render evil for evil unto any man, but ever follow that which is good, both among yourselves and to all men. Rejoice evermore. Pray without ceasing. In everything, give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Quench not the spirit. Despise not prophesyings. Prove all things. Hold fast that which is good. Abstain from all appearance of evil. And by doing these things, the very God of peace sanctifies you wholly. And I pray God your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Faithful is he that calleth you, who also will do it. Now, friends, I want to talk to you this morning about prayer. So we're going to focus on verse 17. Pray without ceasing. Now, if you're like me, you've heard stories of old where people have prayed all night long. People have dedicated times to prayer. And I'm certainly not taking anything away from that. But when Jesus said in John chapter 4 and verse 23, he says, The hour comes and now is when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and truth. And so this is focusing upon the attitude that we have in prayer. You see, there are many people that have dedicated times to prayer who are praying to false gods every single day. Some of these gods are made from metal. Some of these gods are of stone. Some of these gods are of wood. And it's nothing new that they're doing today because this, this dates all the way back to ancient times. Do you remember in 1 Kings chapter 18, we're told the story of Elijah and the 450 bell prophets. And let's focus on a couple of points here. In verse 24, Elijah challenges their gods to a test to prove who is the living God. And in verse 24, he says, Call ye on the name of your gods, and I will call on the name of the Lord. And the God that answers by fire, let him be God. And so it says in verse 27 through 29, it came to pass at noon that Elijah mocked them. And so Elijah says, Cry louder, for he is a God. Maybe he's talking. Maybe he's pursuing. Maybe he's on a journey. It could be even that he sleeps and he must be awakened. And so verse 28 says they did cry aloud and they even cut themselves after their manner with knives and lancets till the blood gushed out upon them. And it came to pass when midday was past, they prophesied until the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice. But there was neither voice nor any to answer, nor any that regarded their prayer. And so now it's Elijah's turn. He builds the altar. And in verse 33, it says, he put the wood in order upon the altar. He cut the bullock in pieces. He laid him on the wood. And he said, fill four barrels with water. 
and pour it on the burnt sacrifice and on the wood. And he said in verse 34, do it a second time. And they did it a second time. And he said, do it a third time. And they did it the third time. So there are 12 full barrels of water that are drenching, soaking the sacrifice and the wood upon the altar. And it says in verse 45, the water ran about the altar and he filled the trench around the altar also with water. And look what happens. Unlike the gods of Baal, these false gods of wood and stone that these men have been praying to, the living God responds. It says, the fire of the Lord fell and it consumed the burnt sacrifice and the wood and the stones and the dust. And it licked up the water that was in the trench. And so you see, friends, the point is, is that prayer in and of itself does nothing for us. There are people that are praying every day and God, Jehovah, the almighty, the ageless one does not hear, nor does he respond. And so as the people of God is our focus to be upon dedicated times of prayer, there's certainly nothing wrong with that. But what our text is telling us today is that we are to be in a constant state of prayer, pray without ceasing. We are to be in a constant position of prayer a constant attitude of prayer so that we are hearing from God and God is hearing from us like water flowing through a hose, never stopping. We are linked to God. We are in connection with him and whatever he bids us, we hear and obey. And as we face certain circumstances throughout our day, whether it's in, we need forgiveness, whether we're praying for the fruit of the spirit to be exercised, Maybe that our light will shine, that we will be a good representative of the Lord Jesus. No matter what it is we're praying, there's a connection here and he can hear and answer our prayers. And so again, that's what Jesus meant when he said the day is coming and is now here because I, Messiah, have come where you won't worship me in the temple. You won't worship me at dedicated times like maybe the Muslims do to their false gods. Because many times the problem is, is that the attitude is one of prayer in those moments. But as soon as we enter back into our lives, we continue to act like humans, not supernatural new creations that he is creating within us. And so basically what I want you to see this morning isn't the fact of prayer being the words that you say, but the position of your heart. And that's the emphasis of the story when Jesus told of two men in the temple. One lifts his hands and thanks God that he's unlike other men. But the other man can't even lift his eyes to heaven. Beats upon his chest and says, God be merciful to me, a sinner. It's the position of the heart, friends. And so from the moment that you arise till the moment you go to sleep, keep your soul in a position to hear from God. Remain in a state of connectedness, and then, friends, you will pray without ceasing. And one last thing, prayer isn't asking God for things. Prayer is communication. You can do this by rejoicing. You can do this by praising. You can do this by supplication. But at all times and in all things, pray without ceasing. Well, I love you, friends. I pray that your journey is blessed today, and I pray that you would quench not the spirit, that your celebration unto Jesus would make the angels themselves jealous with envy. Now, as he wills, friends, and until tomorrow, I love you, and I'll see you on the next video.